Deborah is 51 years old and was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes 12 years ago. She comes from a close-knit family. Her multi-generational household includes her 77-year-old mother, her daughter, and her two grandkids. Deborah spent her career as an electrician, but she's now unable to work because of peripheral neuropathy, a complication of diabetes that causes pain and numbness in the hands and feet. Although Deborah knows what she needs to do to manage diabetes, she tends to fall off the wagon. Sometimes this includes removing her insulin pump. Our goal is to help Deborah get healthy so she can be more involved with her grandkids and generally feel better. We brought in certified diabetes educator, Martha McKittrick. I'm here today to get Deborah back on track in dealing with her diabetes. Let's go inside and meet Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Martha. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Come on in. Let's get started. When I first met Martha, I thought there's someone I could learn a lot from. So, Deborah, what can I do to help get you back on track with your diabetes treatment plan? Oh, Martha, I'm hoping that you can help me with staying consistent with my medical plan. I'm looking forward to finding out how I can stay mobile as well. Mm -hmm. Any nutritional tips that you can give me to help me with my diet. I can help you with that. Today we're going to talk about your meal plan for diabetes because what you eat has a huge effect on your blood glucose. I want to talk about your mobility. I know that's really important to you. I want to find ways for you to get up and moving. And then lastly, I want to give you tips on how to adhere to your whole treatment plan. So I'm going to help you and we'll do it. How much rice would you serve yourself at dinner? Okay, hey Deborah, I'm in your kitchen, and I know nutrition was one of your concerns, so I want to get started and talk about your diet today. Okay. So let's take a look in your cabinets. Um, okay, I see some rice here. That would be my favorite sauce of starch. Okay, and I'm sure you've looked at the label for the carbohydrate content. Yes. Do you pay attention to your portion sizes? Portion size would be something that I would need some assistance with. We'll definitely talk about that. Before I met Martha, I thought that I had a good control on carb counting, etc. But as we got deeper into the conversation, I realized there was a lot left for me to learn. How much rice would you serve yourself at dinner? Be honest now. Okay. Getting hungry, just looking. That's about right. So if we were to check and see how much, what is the portion size here? Uh, I'm going to put this into the measuring cup, and I think you're actually going to be right on target with what the portion size is. So if we measure that out, three quarters. It's it's yeah. actually yep yeah, three quarters on the nose. So you did you did a good job. That's great. Okay. I'd like to ask you a question. So what would be more satisfying to you if we, you did four ounces of orange juice, which equals right here, or um, if you had an orange. Wow, I would think the orange. Right, because the orange, it takes longer to eat because you have to peel it, it has a little fiber in it, versus the juice, it's just like you chug it down. I wanted to have the right diet so that this glucose and I could be on the same page. Part of also diabetes meal planning is eating meals on regular schedules. But it's hard sometimes because the sleeping habits change. And I might not fall asleep until 2.30, 3 o'clock, you know. Now I'm waking up past a normal breakfast time. That's part of, you know, sticking to the treatment plan because you want to kind of take small steps. And it's not like everybody has to have breakfast at 8 a.m. You know, your breakfast might be a little bit later. And I know one of the problems is, is, you know, you have trouble sleeping, you stay up really late. So what you want to start doing is maybe trying to go to bed a little bit earlier and have breakfast a little bit earlier. You know, maybe have it at 11 instead of noon. Mm. And then maybe your lunch would be four or five hours later, and then you'd have your dinner. Okay. So it might not be the exact regular times as somebody else, but for you, but you want to be eating at regular intervals. You, you tell me one of your biggest concerns is your lack of mobility. Yes. 
And I know ever since you got the peripheral neuropathy, you've been a lot less active. Yes. The peripheral neuropathy that I suffer from has put me in a quagmire. I'm still limber enough to get around on my own, but I don't want to debilitate any further. So I'm taking the exercise aspect of this very seriously. What I want to help you do is get more active. Okay. And you want to start small. You know, since you haven't been doing that much, my first tip would be when you're watching television, when there's a commercial on, yes. stand up and walk in place during the commercial. And I noticed you had some hand weights. Get those hand weights. Just, you know, use the little dumbbell curls. I think my first thoughts were, I hope I can do this. But the things that she gave me were gradual things, doing what I can do. Just trying to stay limber. And that's just all we really want, is to keep the mobility going. Do you like to swim? Yes. Okay, that would be a great thing I for you. I love to swim. And I have a pool about 10 to 15 minutes from here, Olympic-sized pool. Oh, that's great. The swimming, the tip that she gave me about swimming, I knew that would be something that I could take advantage of and that I'd actually like. Once you do start to exercise a little more, you want to make sure you always check your blood sugar before you start. Okay. Because exercise can actually help lower blood sugar. And always carry some kind of fat-acting carbohydrate with you. Okay. You know, maybe like a little box of raisins or something, just in case you got low, you want to be prepared. Be able to bring it up. Okay. Yeah. So I think by doing that, you know, it's going to improve your overall health and, you know, will help you keep up with your grandchildren. That's my most paramount thing. <laughs> you don't think life's over yet, you know? Mm -hmm. I got a lot of living to do. So I know having diabetes is a really difficult disease because it's it's 24-7, 365 days a year. You get no vacations. You know, we've talked about before that sometimes I think you kind of know what to do, but you have trouble actually adhering to the treatment plan. Yeah. So, how, you know, how can I help you? Like, what what's your barrier? I know you said sometimes you don't feel like Taking, you don't feel like you're using the pump, you might just take it off. Well, it's not so much that I take it off, it's just that you must change it two to three times a week. Mm -hmm. And then I'll take it off to change it, and if some strange, odd reason, I just don't put it right back on as I should. Mm -hmm. I'll go, oh, I gotta take a shower. Oh, I wanna go soak in the tub first. Mm -hmm. I'll do it then. Mm -hmm. but just a couple of months ago when we had the holidays, mm -hmm. you know, just those great holiday dinners that are loaded with carbs and I just didn't want to count carbs. You know, so, I mean, what I would suggest is can you think of some reasons, you know, some positive reasons rather than thinking about the negative, if you stick to your diabetes treatment plan, what would the benefits be? Well, I'll be here for my grandchildren, to assist my mother and myself. I mean, I don't think life's over yet, you know. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of living to do. So you might even want to, you know, get some little index cards and write little notes for yourself mm -hmm. um, so you remember, you know, what your goals are and how you'll feel better. I will take my medicine. I will carb count. I will change my pump every three days. I will do my exercise. I will walk. I will drink my water. Sometimes you get bummed out because diabetes picked me. I didn't pick it. So you mentioned clearing your head. What's what's going on in your head? I think it's just that sometimes you get bummed out because diabetes picked me. I didn't pick it. There wasn't anything that I did to my body. I feel relatively young and stuck with this responsibility. I mean, I take care of myself anyway, but now I have the paralysis. I have the carb counting, I have to take the pain meds. My family, they, they support me as best they can, but they don't have diabetes, so they just may not know exactly what I need, when I need it, but they do offer what they can. I realize I'm not in this by myself. I have a support system, and everybody loves me, and I know that. Having diabetes is really, really difficult. It's very stressful. 
Um, and one of the things I, I might suggest to you is to consider getting some kind of support. You know, consider a support group. Okay. I actually have one plan in the upcoming weeks, and I'm really excited about that's it. That's fantastic. See, that's great because as supportive as your family and fans say are too, which is great because you have the support, you know, they don't get it 100% like somebody, like a train council or like somebody who has diabetes will. So when you're in the support group, they can really give you the support that you need, you know, help you work through all this. I'll do the things that I need to do to stay in this game. So Deborah, it was really nice to spend the day with you, and I hope that we were able to give you some motivation to take control of your diabetes. The were the tips that you gave me were invaluable. The nutritional tips about the, how to read the packaging to understand portion counting and measuring. Also, um, the exercising, which could just be from a walk all the way up to swimming. Which yes. we're going to work on. You're going to work on that. Yes. You were already off on the, on the right track. You know, you had a pretty good knowledge of nutrition. It was just tightening things up a little bit with portion size and, you know, the regular meal plans. You had the family support, which is great. Yes. And you seemed to really enjoy the little walk that we took and seem motivated to do more exercise. So I really hope that you can keep up with that positive attitude that you have. And, you know, soon enough, I think you'll be running after your grandchildren. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. I'll do the things that I need to do to stay in this game. I no longer want to sit on the sidelines and look in. I'm going to be in.